G'day folks. Well, for this afternoon's little experiment, um, we've got a uh, ignition coil driver to build. Very crude, very easy for anyone to do. Uh, I don't know how long it lasts. It uses an oscillating relay to trigger the coil. So it probably won't last as long as a solid state driver, but pretty much anyone can build one if they can get their hands on a little relay like that. This one has a normally open and normally closed contact on it, and uh, it works. I know that because I tried it at work and I used one of those relays off the same dead controllers. Um, these ones here were an older model which suffered a bit of water damage and died, so there's a bazillion of them floating around at work getting thrown in the bin. So I'm going to grab a couple of relays and just keep them handy for things like this. And I'm using the uh, CM11-102 coils from Hitachi. Uh, came off a Isuzu Rodeo V6 engine. I uh, still have a couple of these around, so might as well uh, demonstrate how the driver works. All it's doing is using the relay to make and break contact so many cycles per second, and it produces a pretty nice thick spark. Uh, yeah, the one I tested at work with a white relay was cranking out a nice thick long arc about that big, like to the point where the director's jaw hit the floor. He had no idea how powerful it was going to be. Neither did I, to be honest. But we detuned it and used a blue relay, which cycled a lot slower. And it seemed to work a bit better. But this is, I think this is the original relay that I tried when I made it obs obscenely overpowered. Because we were building a uh, pest control device using high tension stuff and playing around with electric fence transformers and things like that. So I decided to take one of these to work and just have a play around with it. And sure enough, we came up with a rather nasty little pest controller. Detuned of course, but if I were to put one of these white relays in it, it would throw out a spark that long and melt leads off things, like it would melt the end off this resistor if I held it over there. It just burns the material away. So yeah, all we really need is three wires, a coil which is ground, positive and trigger. Trigger, I think these resistors are too high, but I'm going to find a 4.7 or 5 up 5k quarter watt resistor. Um, YouTuber Haxby2007, I think that's, that was his name. Uh, yeah, he works for physics department at La Trobe Uni, I think it is. And uh, yeah, I sent him one of these and he did a bit of working out and nutting around with it and came up with a resistance value to trigger it and a power supply, that sort of thing. So we'll give it a go. I know I'll be able to reproduce what I did at work, but. I just thought I'd show you how to do it. It's a very crude driver, incredibly crude driver, but it does work. Okay, so we have the coil connected to the battery. So we've got ground, which is also chassis ground that spark goes to. Positive in the middle there, positive 12 volts, and trigger. I don't have a uh, 5.6K resistor, I do have a, uh, well, from what I could just quickly find, I went through a few old boards and things. I do have a 40 ohm resistor which might be a bit high, but these don't have a driver board in them, so if anything it might just fry the primary after a while, so resistance is probably critical to keeping these coils happy. Uh, outside of normal vehicle operating specs they do run pretty damn hot, and they will blow anyway, so they're best used for very short durations, don't leave them running too long, but even just tapping the terminals, the positive, you get a nice spark. So, of course, logic says we have to cycle that pulse so many times per second to get a better spark. And that's where the uh, little oscillating relay is going to come into it. So I'll harvest that relay off the board and let's give it a try. There might also be some bigger relays around here. That's out of a uh, digital photocopier, or digital copier. Uh, no relays by the looks of it, just caps. But I'll find something, there'll be more relays around here. That's out of a multi-function copier, Samsung. Um, that's where I got the resistors from. Again, caps, but no cube relays. So I'll keep an eye out for cube relays and things. I think the faster it cycles, the better the pulse might be. I can't remember, I had to detune the one at work. I can't remember if I put a bigger relay or a smaller relay on it. Either way, we'll find out. Okay, well, after a bit more tinkering around, 
I found that the relay off this board was well, pretty much no good. Um, yeah, that was a complete waste of time, but these normally do work. Uh, I think resistance in the resistor might have something to do with it, but it had sparked momentarily, but once the relay was oscillating up to speed, I got absolutely nothing. So I'm guessing it's either trashed or I'm just doing it wrong. I can't remember how I did it at work, so I'm just sort of winging it as I go. But this one here is a Ford, uh, just automotive relay, 12 volt. It's got normally open, normally closed contact, which is all marked on the side of the can. And what I've done is gone from normally closed breaks its connection to the coil. So as it gets power, the contact opens momentarily, the coil loses power and the magnetic field collapses. So it makes, breaks, makes, breaks. It just does that so many times per second. Uh, and the resistor is just coming off the uh, positive from the, the center pin there, which is 87A. Uh, that's the normally closed pin. 86 and 85 are the coil. So we've got the two non-copper coloured pins, the tin, tin pins of the coil. So coil negative goes straight to the battery negative, coil positive goes through to the resistor, and then I apply power through pin 30, which is the centre contact. So your centre pin here can bridge between either normally closed or normally open, just swings. But this relay isn't getting enough power for long enough to actually hit the normally open contact. You could almost use it like a Morse code machine. And that's just the contact moving ever so slightly, making and breaking the circuit. So let's apply the power to the coil and see what happens. Yay! That's more like it. It's probably throwing out quite a bit of RF as well. These things are powerful, like over powerful. And that's surprisingly loud. <laughs> you can have some fun with these. I wouldn't want to put my finger across it. Oops, I think we're breaking down the insulation. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Yeah. I don't know how long these relays would last, but since there's about a bazillion dead cars in the world to pillage these normal open-closed relays, or double-pole relay, I guess you'd call it, normally open, normally closed, and you can use them out of pretty much anything. You could use a power relay out of a old CRT monitor or something. A lot of old CRT monitors had a relay about twice the size of that in them, and that'd work. Uh, you could pillage it out of a car, you could pillage it out of a computer power supply if... I don't think any of them still use relays now, but the old, old ones did. Um, yeah, if you can find a normal cube relay like that, 12 volts, it should work. I'll have to try it with a big Bosch coil one day and get a nice big solid state uh, 60kV Bosch coil from a Falcon like mine, a Ford. Uh, yeah, there's loads of different ways you can drive these. Solid state drivers are cool, but this is just crude, basic, and very easy. But beware, 
that arc that's coming off that is not a toy. It will probably severely injure or kill you if you get across it. I mean, it's all well grounded, so using the control wire like this is okay, but if it were to accidentally feed back or do something like that, well, I'd be in a world of hurt. So yeah, don't mess around with these unless you've got a bit of high voltage experience. Start with a really simple uh, 555 timer IC based flyback driver or something like that and work up from there. But it does go to show how simple it is to set one of these ignition coil or coil unplug coils up for, uh, well, a little bit of fun. I have to find something to apply this to, maybe an old plasma TV panel or something like that. Who knows? A uh, lightning orb or a vacuum tube or something. Actually, try and get that arc under vacuum. That's going to be one of the next things. I haven't done vacuum arc experiments for ages and I don't think I ever bothered videoing it. But that'll be next. And that is how you make a very crude driver. And if you've got any reasonable understanding of electronics, all you need to know is that you're supplying power to the coil, but its own contact makes and breaks the contact or the connection to the coil. So as the coil energizes, it opens the contact, the normally closed contact, and the field in the coil collapses, so the contact springs back and then makes that connection again, and it just does that so many cycle, as many cycles as it can. Uh, the bigger the relay, the more mass there is in that arm. Uh, the more mass there is in the arm, the slower it will cycle. Like, it'll physically... It, it cannot... It'll get to a point where it cannot overcome the amount of weight that's on that arm, the inertia, that sort of thing. Uh, there's a bit of a trick to it. The smaller the relay is, the faster it will cycle. The bigger it is, the slower it will cycle. So anyway, that's all for that one, and thanks for watching. I hope you found that interesting. So I know I did, and I'm going to find something to do with this. Ha, <laughs> too much gap. But that's a fair gap. <laughs>